The answer is yes. Yes, they are. Thanks for coming to my TED Talk. If that's all you wanted to know, please leave a thumbs up and have a great day. But if you want to know why they are worth using and whether or not they're better than using thermal paste, I'll need to go into a bit more detail. So most DIY PC builders are familiar with debates surrounding thermal paste, how much you should use, can you use too much, what's the best way to apply it, and do you even need it? Or is there an alternative? And of course there is. I'm not talking about toothpaste, peanut butter, or whatever else I've been suggested on this channel. No, we're talking about these fancy things. You may have seen these thermal pads popping up more frequently. I certainly have. I've received plenty of suggestions to try these out. So the time has come to see if these fancy little pieces of graphite can usurp their pasty brethren. So I bought what I could locally. I have Icy Graphite, one of the OGs, and Thermal Grizzly Carbonaut. The Icy Graphite is a square 40 millimeter size, and you can see it's somewhat rigid. There is a crease in the middle. It was bent there when I got it. I don't think this will affect the temps, but I think I'd like to make a note of that. Innovative Cooling claims their pad has a thermal conductivity rating of 35 watts per meter Kelvin. As for the Carbonaut, this is the 38 millimeter square size. In contrast to the IC Graphite, the Carbonaut is very pliable. It's kind of like a silk sheet. This one also has an imperfection. It's a small hole. It came like that straight out of the box, but I don't think it will really affect the temps. Thermal Grizzly claims the pad has a K value of 62.5 watts per meter Kelvin, getting close to double that of the IC Graphite. And for reference, that is five times the rating of their own Cryonaut Thermal Paste, which is a K value of 12.5. To figure out how that plays out when it comes to temps, I will pit them against each other, but more importantly, against some of my favorite thermal pastes, Arctic MX-5, Noctua NTH2, and Thermal Grizzly Cryonaut. I may even throw in a bonus test. I will conduct two simple tests. The first will be synthetic, 30 minutes stability test with Cinebench R23, and the second is 30 minutes of Forza Horizon 5 on extreme settings. I collected the data from HW Info with the CCD1 TDI reading using the average CPU temp to compare the performance of each pad or paste. My CPU is a Ryzen 5900X on an X570 motherboard, cooled by a Kraken X53 AIO with a fan set to about 50%, ramping up exponentially after 60 degrees Celsius. Ambient for all tests, 23 degrees. Now for the thermal paste application method. I've opted for the P method. Remember, application doesn't really matter as long as the IHS is covered, and in each test, the P method did the trick. Anyways, let's not waste any more time. Let's take a look at the results. Starting with Cinebench R23, Icy Graphite comes in the warmest with an average of 72.5 degrees Celsius, then Carbonaut at 71.9, with Arctic MX-5 nearly matching at 71.7, and the other two pastes in a league of their own, with the Noctua paste clocking in an average of 69.2, and the Cryonaut the lowest at 68.3. Already with these results, we can see that all three thermal pastes have performed better than the two pads, though the MX-5 it barely did, with the widest margin between the Cryonaut and IC Diamond, with a difference of 4.2 degrees Celsius. That's not an insignificant difference, but it's something I don't think is very worrying. This is a synthetic test after all, and most people aren't going to be pushing their CPU this hard for extended periods of time. So let's move on to Forza for some real world gaming results. We end up with the same order as we had in the Cinebench test. I see Graphite at the top with 55.7, Carbonaut half a degree below, MX5 54.4, NTH2 at 52.5, and Cryonaut taking the crown at 51.6. So all three of the thermal compounds I tested were able to perform better than both of the pads. Which begs the question, why would I say they're worth it? Because I truly think they are. They aren't the best performing, but there are several benefits that the pads have over the paste. And only one that I can think of that the paste have over the pads. I guess I guess there's two probably, but we'll get to those because first I wanna list the reasons why these are great, even though when it came to thermal conductivity, they didn't perform as well. First is obvious and that's the lack of mess to clean up. It's the difference between this and this. The amount of paste that I've had to clean up since starting this YouTube channel is absolutely ridiculous. It's only put into perspective once you see the collection of empty thermal paste tubes I've accumulated. So for me, that's just a time saver and I like that. But for someone new to the hobby, it removes the worry or hassle of trying to figure out how and what to clean your CPU with. And I know you might be thinking, it's not a lot of cleaning, but I like to think of it like this. A little bit of cleaning is a lot more than none. B is consistent application. No more worrying about whether or not you put the right amount of paste on. Just square it up with the IHS and mount the cooler. 
it's done. In both tests, after removing the cooler, both pads were still aligned nicely, giving me confidence in their performance. But it did make me wonder how to ensure it's placed on the CPU, like it could end up moving around before the cooler is actually secure. So I thought if I had some kind of viscous adhesive that was thermally conductive, then I could secure the pad to the CPU and cooler and then make sure that there's like really good contact, you know, for like maximum thermal conductivity. Yeah, I wanted to see what happens when you mix the thermal paste in the pads. That's what I did for the bonus test. Come on. The results were in the direction of what I expected, but to be honest, I didn't think it would be this bad. Cinebench the highest yet, 4.2 degrees above the pack at 76.6, and in Forza, five degrees above at 60.7. Not the synergistic effect one might hope for. And these results became much more clear when I took the cooler off. The poor Carbonaut never stood a chance. It was torn apart like a middle-aged heretic being stretched on the rack during the Spanish Inquisition. And even the thermal paste hardened up. I, I don't know what happened there. But anyways, back to why these things are worth using. Which brings us to number three. You don't have to deal with your cooler stuck to your CPU. You may have experienced the stressful situation of trying to carefully twist and pry your cooler away from your motherboard without ripping out your AMD CPU. I actually had this issue after the MX5 test. And every time, it's just... Not good for the cortisol levels. Another one is that these are reusable. You can reuse thermal paste in some situations. I've done it in a previous video, but generally most people aren't going to do that. And it's a hassle. With these pads, you can use them for as long as you don't break them. The Carbonaut seems to be quite fragile while the Icy Diamond is more rigid. And what I did to the, that Carbonaut over there, I think you would need less force than that to actually destroy it. So. There's that, but I think it's still a lot more reusable than paste. And lastly, and certainly not least, in fact, I think this might be the top reason I would recommend them, is that they don't dry out. They're already dry. So most thermal paste is usually good for a few years, but these things should be good for much, much longer, which makes them perfect for most casual PC users, making the whole process of choosing, applying, and cleaning thermal paste completely unnecessary. And now those are the good things. So on the other hand, there's two two bad things I can I can really think of. The first one obviously is performance, but even still, the gap in the Cinebench test between Cryonaut and Icy Graphite with a difference of 4.2 Celsius, actually it was identical at 4.1 I think in the Forza test. But either way, unless you're looking to overclock, these differences are pretty minimal. I was comparing the extremes. So consider this: I don't really recommend people use Cryonaut. Not for most people, of course. It performs great, but it has been reported to dry out rather quickly compared to other pastes. I usually recommend whatever people can find, or my favorite is the Noctua NTH2. And the better performing pad was the Cryonaut. So the difference between those two was 2.7 in the Cinebench and 2.8 in Forza. So less than three degrees difference. It's something, it's not nothing, but it's nowhere big enough a difference to cause any noticeable issues with your PC or notable premature degradation. While they may not have the bleeding edge performance, I would bet that the pads maintain performance for much longer over something like Cryonaut. These are basically set it and forget it. So that was supposed to be a point against the pads. Poor performance. If you need the edge, get the paste. Now the second con is electrical conductivity. Both the Carbonaut and Icy Graphite are electrically conductive. So you wanna avoid contacts on your motherboard essentially, right? But generally you have your PC unplugged and discharged. So yeah, that is a point against the pads, but probably not gonna be an issue. So yeah, thermal pads are worth it. And I don't think this is a question of which one is better, but rather who is it for? And if you want the, the best, or at least the best thermally performing, paste is obviously the way to go. But if you want ease of use and peace of mind, pads. So in conclusion, I would say that for the majority of PC builders, thermal pads are a worthy choice over paste. And with that, this has been Tech Illiterate. My name is Nick. Thank you for watching. And another is that these are reusable. You can reuse thermal paste in some situations. That's it. That's the thermal paste. So finally, I would say that, finally, I'd like to say that, and I would say, finally, I like to say that for the majority of PC builders, thermal paste are, thermal paste. Did you finish the video like that? Jesus. Jesus.